Hey guys, it is Liberty here from Spirit Move Ministries. Woohoo! Had a great time in Florida. It was amazing. Um, <clears throat> came home to 30 degrees colder weather, so that was amazing. Uh, yeah, at least 30, maybe even colder, maybe even more like, I don't even know, 40, 40 degrees colder. It was like 37 degrees when we got here. It was not 37 in Florida, um, but excited to use my fireplace and wear my flannel Christmas pajamas, amen, on my quote-unquote day off I had after I came back. That really doesn't exist, but I can work a lot in my pajamas with a tablet, so I'm still working even if I'm in my pajamas. Um, anyway, uh, love you guys. Had an amazing time in Florida. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that we're working on for 2023. Um, there's other things I will be doing with other ministries. I will keep you posted on the schedule. I'm pretty sure I'll be back in January doing something, but I'll keep you posted. Amen. Um, and then probably uh, end of February, beginning of March, then May, and then I don't even know, probably there's going to be like three other things. Um, we will be in California, Los Angeles, uh, basically over the weekend of the 9th through the 11th of December. That on the 10th, we are doing a huge, massive Return of the Prodigals event. Bring your prodigals in person if you can. If not, bring a picture of them um, or send them to the ministry. We've had thousands upon thousands. We have buckets of pictures. They will be hauled to California on the plane and they will get prayed over at this event. It's, we, we, we're making it a big deal because God is on the move majorly with the prodigals and he's preparing to bring them home, amen? Um, all different variations. And so uh, be praying for your prodigals and if you can, get them to this event in LA. We are gonna be just outside of the LA area. We kind of have to do that because we might get hassled and so we have to kind of go outside the boundary of the LA County area. So we will be in that area, but most likely just outside of the boundary um, so we don't get harassed. And so um, God always gives us favor. We're not worried about it, but we're gonna have an, uh, an amazing good time. So on Saturday the 10th is the huge revival service. You don't wanna miss it. And then um, Sunday, we are gonna be going over to Azusa Street. The Lord has told me to go there while we're there. Um, in the afternoon, most likely it'll be probably around three o'clock, three or four o'clock in the afternoon um, on that Sunday. And uh, if you want to come gather with us, I don't know what he's going to have us do, but we're supposed to go there and I'm going to be obedient because that's what I do. So um, we would love to see you both days. Amen. Get your prodigals to the event, whatever you have to do to get them there. Um, also, Thanksgiving is coming, you guys. Celebrate with your families the best that you can. This is a time of being thankful. Um, I am so thankful for all of you that support and partner with Spirit Move Ministry. We can't do this without you, you guys. I mean, for real. We can't do this without you. And so we are humbled and honored that you guys participate with us so that we can do what God's called us to do beyond YouTube videos and you know, you guys know what I mean traveling all over and doing what we're called to do and uh, Getting people saved people are getting healed everywhere um, even internationally and Just baptizing people everything he's called us to do You're you're sowing into the kingdom. You're you're getting you know treasure in heaven built up because of your partnership with ministries that are truly doing what God's called us to do on the earth for these final days because we are in the final end time days. Amen. And it's time to get the harvest in. And so uh, we're called to do that. We're all called to do that. But even if you can't go do it, but you have the means to support people who do it, we are thankful for you and we love you. We honor you. I declare uh, blessings poured out over you as you give to our ministry and other ministries that I know most likely some of them you're probably, if you're, if you're supporting me, you're supporting them. Um, you're building up a treasure in heaven. Um, 
and you will see it someday and you know you you might see it on earth we love it when we see it on earth amen and he pours it out i'm going to declare that over you and believe that god's hand is upon your finances as you are generous and you sow into his kingdom regularly i thank you guys i can't say thank you enough um also reminder level one of mentorship and level two are up you can go and uh Sign up for that also to the website, spiritmoveministry.co. Also, the School of Ministry, uh, we have the orientation in January and the first classes start for the next first year students in February. If you want registration info on that, you can go to spiritmoveministry.co, um, email us, spiritmoveministry at gmail.com, and we will get you the info you need for the School of Ministry that will wreck your life because... The whole entire subject of the school of ministry is for you to learn how to walk in the supernatural. Um, we take you beyond salvation. We take you into the next levels <clears throat> of being discipled to follow the call, whatever that is. So we, we're going to pour into you the fivefold ministry and then God's going to decide what, how he wants to use you. And it could be as a prophet, it could be as a pastor, it could be as a worship leader. We don't know what you know and God knows. We're here to facilitate pouring into you what's necessary to, for you to have a proper foundation to build upon, to walk in the supernatural, to understand the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, to have all your gifts activated, all that. This is what God's called me to do basically on the earth. And this is what I do is I pour that into other people. So the school of ministry is extremely affordable. It's a 10 month program and it will wreck your life, but you will have to be faithful, but it will wreck your life. It will wreck your life. That's all I got to say about that. Okay. Moving along, you guys down below in this video in the description is everywhere you can go to check out the website, um, to give to see what our next events are. Um, everything's being posted. It's usually always below me in the video description of every video we put on YouTube. So you can check it out. Okay, so this word I released in Florida, it is not necessarily a Florida word, but Florida was on his heart. And so I released it in Florida first because I felt like the Lord told me to do that. And so um, I'm excited now. The Lord, ever since I came home, will not let it go. And um, usually what he'll do is he'll keep bringing a word back up, even if he if it's a prophecy or a prophetic word he gave me six months ago. If it keeps showing back up and he was and he keeps giving me the title over and over again, I know he's saying this is the moment. This is the time and season for that word to be released into the body. And so this word was a word I had just received before I went to Florida. It was based on a prophetic dream. And um, sorry. The air is drying my throat out. Um, and so it is an awesome word. And I released it at the home gathering that I did um, in Florida, in Orlando. And we had an, an amazing time in the glory, you guys. Uh, we didn't film the whole thing. I think the word was, was filmed, but that's about it. But we had an amazing time. And... Um, we were so, so excited to be there, and I was beyond excited to release this word. You guys, you're about to get hit with some glory. Hopefully, you're not driving, and if you are, you better hang tight, okay? For real. It was a massive glory fest when I was releasing the word in her house. Um, people that were sitting near me, because it was it's close proximity when you're in a home fellowship. Uh, they were struggling to keep it together, um, and I was just like, hang tight. I know it's a lot of glory right here, but we're about to pray. We're about to have an amazing time. It's going to be great. Um, this is an amazing word, you guys, and it's going to blow your mind. I know I say that about every prophetic word or prophecy or whatever he gives me, but I he blows my mind every single day. So I'm about to blow your mind. Are you guys ready? Get ready because I'm about to blow your mind. So on 11 7 he woke me all night long with a dream. And in the dream, he kept showing me the words, let heaven come over and over, let heaven come. And I was like, I woke up and I, several times and I always write everything down 
If he speaks it, I write it. I have a very full phone journal and a physical journal. Um, I value his voice. And so if he's waking me up all night, I'm going to write down what he tells me. So he's all night long like a banner across my face in my dreams was let heaven come. Let heaven come over and over and over and over. And then I got up and I wrote it down and then I went back to sleep and it was just all night long. And I got up and I was like, okay, God, woo, let heaven come. What are you wanting to say? Glory is already, it's already showing up, you guys. Because I thought it was a powerful word for me, for the whole body of Christ. Although I will say this, before I went to sleep, Florida was on my mind as I was praying. As I pray in the spirit and all that, and I'm worshiping before I go to sleep, Florida was on my mind. The dream wasn't like, this is for Florida, but Florida was on my mind. So when I got up in the morning, I was like, okay, God, you got something for Florida. This is for Florida, but it's for everybody. And I told them when I released it in Florida, you were on God's heart all night long when I had the dream, but this is not just for Florida. The whole body of Christ needs this word and it's going to blow all of your minds. And so when I got up, I was like, okay. And that song, Let Heaven Come, just kept coming up in my head and um, in my spirit. And I was like, okay, I know you need me to listen to that song. There's several versions, but I felt like I knew the version he wanted me to listen to from um, Jen Johnson, Bethel, basically. So that's the version I felt like he, you know, what is was a, attached to the spirit of what he was speaking. And so... I went and I sat there and I turned on the song and I just put it on repeat and I was just sitting in the glory and sitting with the Lord and I was like, okay, God, what's going on? Woo! And immediately the glory showed up and I was just sitting there and he said, um, I said, what was this dream about all night long? What do you need to say to Florida? What do you need to say to your people all across the world, not just Florida? And he said, tell my people. let heaven come and man it was so so much glory you guys they need to let it come they need to welcome it with open arms they need to know it's available to them every moment of every day they just need to let it come many things can hinder heaven our fears our mindsets the demonic things we've come into agreement with this is huge you guys this is huge the demonic things that they've come into agreement with. The enemy wants to taunt my people so that they will be distracted and forget. They will forget all that's available to them in the glory realms. Heaven is waiting to be released upon my people. It's ready to give you all what you need to walk with me and follow the call. Heaven is ready, but my people just need to let it come. This is, and, and as I wrote the word, these are all in, you know, quotations. Because he's a funny God and he like likes grammar, okay? Just let it come, in quotations. Just let it come. Let heaven come, my people. Just let it come. Welcome it and embrace it. Call out to it. This heaven carries all that you need. It gives you a future and a hope. It provides all your future needs, healing, deliverance, truth. Heaven will give you a new perspective on all things, not just in the world and all the junk going on right now, my words, not just in the world, but in your own life and God's future plan for you and your call on the earth to serve him on the earth. When you let heaven come, you give me permission to work and have my way in your life and in your future. And you choose to flow and go with it. All heaven offers will come and flow through you and into your future. Welcome my presence, my people. Welcome heaven. And just let it come. However it looks. Resist fear and just let it flow. Just receive and just let it flow, my people. Let 
heaven come. Woo! I know you can feel the glory. Everybody that was around me in person when I released this was all wrecked in the glory. You could barely keep it together in the room. For real, you guys. I don't do no hype. And so... Colossians 3, 2 says, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. And basically, the depths of the word, the Lord was like, my people just need to let heaven come. And he said, we will hinder heaven. Heaven has a plan. Heaven knows what's best for us. Heaven, God loves us, you guys. Heaven loves us. He doesn't always like that we're on the receiving end of other people's sin and bad choices. He doesn't like that we get slandered because I'll be real with you, you guys know this, you should know this, any real person who's out there doing it, following the call, walking in revival, uh, promoting the fire of the Holy Spirit, you're gonna get slandered and attacked. All kinds of areas of your life are gonna get attacked. It's like a normal thing. You're on the devil's list. You want to be on his list. Not like you're welcoming it, but you have to have the knowledge that if you're not complacent and you're not lazy, he most likely hates you. But on the flip side of that, what we carry is greater because greater is he that is in us than what is in the world and anything the devil can produce. We have authority over that. We don't have to let it affect us. This is a side note. I think someone must need to hear this. We don't have to let it affect us. We don't have to be a sponge and soak it all in. And it's not, God's not saying, someone needs to hear this. Get all hard in your heart. Be a big old turkey butt. Don't be emotional. Don't be a sensitive. Sorry, guys, you guys already know I'm real. I ain't holding back. I love the Lord. He knows I love him. We have this beautiful relationship. But we're sassy. And he can be really sassy. He's like, tell my people to just let heaven come. Come on. Stop blocking it. Okay. Here's the thing. We don't, we don't want to be a sponge soaking everything up. But he also doesn't want us to be hard as a rock to where we, like if you've ever read Beta Satan, I've taught that class so many times. It's like a foundational thing for all of our disciples. Then you end up with cold love. We don't want to become that because of hurts, pain, suffering, rejection, and other massive, nasty things that the devil brings through people and we're, we're affected by it. Um, he doesn't want us to be hard as a rock, but we can't be a sponge, you guys. We can't soak everything up because then we carry that around and we're full of the weight of all the burdens his burden is light and his yoke is easy. It is for real. We have to understand that and choose it. <clears throat> he doesn't want us to become um, hard as a rock to be able to handle the attacks of the enemy. That's not how the authority works. If we're a sponge, everything's going to destroy us. And we have to be unshakable, you guys. We have to be unshakable. And unshakable doesn't mean hard and cold and bitter and a big old turkey butt about God's future for us. Here's the thing. We can all be guilty of that. I only say what I know and what I have lived through for real. You guys, I'm not going to say I've never been a turkey butt to the Lord when he's like... <clears throat> Okay, here's the situation. I'm a prophet. And I'm a seer. He shows me things in the future. I have journals full of things. I, I dream almost everything. I dream four or five dreams a night. If I'm not writing dreams down, I'm receiving a word. Or he's telling me to wake up and pray for somebody all night long. And I wake up and I pray in the spirit for 30 minutes and I go back to sleep when he wants to let me go back to sleep. So here's the thing, you know, because of that, sometimes he'll help me see things that are coming, even if they're good. Some, okay, we're guilty of even good things, rejecting good things. 
So let's go back to the sponge and the hardened heart. Evidently, somebody needed to hear this um, and needed to be incl included in this prophetic word. And then I'm going to get really into the nitty gritty of let heaven come. And you're going to have your mind blown even more, okay, than you already do because there's already a lot of glory. Um, things happen to us. And what will happen is, is we, we either soak it all in, which is very bad. God, the authority we carry isn't hard hearts. It isn't an authority. Yes, sometimes we have to stand up. We have to be firm. Or we have to tell the devil, shut up. Or we have to cast out demons. We have to say, boogie on. We do deliverance ministry. My ministry does all things. We're apostolic. So sometimes we have to cast demons out and we have to tell them like it is. I don't play games with no demons. I already know who I am. I make them leave. Most of the time, if they're on or in someone, they can't stand being near me. And when that's happening, I so nicely lay my hands on them and tell them to go bye-bye. If I'm near to where I can do that and they're not like in some big giant crowd. And so here's the thing. He wants us to be tough. He wants us to be unshakable. He wants us to not absorb everything and be a sponge and carry the weight of all the junk that the enemy throws at us through other people, pain and suffering, rejection, things that we think have failed or we failed because things have failed that we didn't expect to fail, okay? But there's an authority we carry that, that authority has to still carry the love of Jesus. It has to still be full of the gospel. It has to be full of the call of God and what he still has us to do. Not in a hard way, you guys. God's not saying be hard and be cold hearted and all that stuff. He's not saying that. He's saying, you know, don't be a turkey butt. Don't become a turkey butt. But you can't absorb everything either. And so I don't know who needed to hear that. Somebody needed to hear that. And so he's letting you know, <clears throat> we cannot be a turkey butt. We cannot um, lack love trying to not be a sponge. But we do have to let stuff bounce off. And so, but at the same time, okay, guys, as not being a sponge not letting all the hurts absorb into us to where it becomes who we are because that's not who we are. We also have to understand we have to let heaven come. And so when I say we have an authority greater as he it is in us, it's not to make us hard. God does need us to be unshakable, but we still have to walk with the love of Jesus. We can't let what someone's done to us cause us to be, to go to the next level. So here's the thing. We can't become unshakable and then use that and build a wall of protection to not let in the next thing God might want to do in your life. Because then you're not letting heaven come. I hope you're tracking with me. You become unshakable and you can either be unshakable and still walk in the love of Jesus and still see things his way and understand his things and all that. Be all in, in the glory and in the call and all that. And still not let the enemy bring stuff in. You can be unshakable and do both of those. Or you can become unshakable and let your hurts, like I said, cause you to build a wall. That then you're hiding behind that wall and you don't let heaven come. So... Back to let heaven come officially. We have to let heaven come. And when I sat there with him, he was like, Liberty, my people have to let heaven come. I have a way and I have a plan. There's th ways I do things that are higher than all of yours. He said, my people have to let heaven come, even if they don't understand. They don't get what I'm doing. They will later. They have to let heaven come. Let me rule their life. 
let me make their future decisions for them and they obey. Let heaven come. He said many people will block heaven because they built up a wall or they're so they're a sponge and they they're so full of hurts there's no room for heaven and they become a bitter turkey butt i'm sorry guys turkey is like the word this month who's ready for turkey okay here's the thing we can't let that happen we have to let heaven come and so the lord's like if my people could understand woo to let heaven come. He said, you tell them the key word is L-E-T. Let is an action word. It's an adjective. It's a verb, whatever you want to call it. It's all those things that mean something active. And so he said, my people, they can choose to let it come or not. And he said, they have to let it come. Whatever form it takes, they have to be okay with it. Not just okay with it. He wants you to love it. He wants you to honor it. He wants you to be humbled by it. He wants you to enjoy it. He wants you to embrace it. He doesn't want you to run from it. Because of old hurts, bitterness, or because you've allowed yourself to become hard, or you're a sponge and you're so weighed down with the stuff you've allowed to absorb in because you're not being unshakable, that there's no room. There's no open door to let heaven come. So here's an example, just so you can see a picture of this when you don't let heaven come. If you get in a terrible car accident and you break your arm and you break your leg, you go to the hospital, you go to the emergency room, they save your life, you have to have surgery, both limbs have surgery. You got cast on them. You got four months of recovery. You're in a wheelchair. Then you're in a, in a crutch. Then you have crutches. And then you're going to physical therapy. You are going to do everything you can to heal your arm and to heal your leg. You're going to do everything you can to let heaven come to your arm and to let heaven come to your leg to heal them. So you can get back on your feet. You can get back to going to work. You can get back to exercising. You can get back to whatever, taking care of your kids. You can get back to whatever, taking, taking care of whatever. I don't even know. You know what I'm saying? You work towards getting healthy again and becoming healed. But see, sometimes the injuries inside and God wants to let things come from heaven, healing come and we don't let it come. We block it because it's not what we thought, it's not what we expected, or we're still bitter, or our heart is still broken, so we don't wanna let anything in yet. We wanna be really careful. We wanna hold back. And the Lord is saying, let heaven come. Don't you know I know what's best for you? Don't you know when heaven comes, it's he healing is in heaven. But he said, a lot of times my people will have a broken arm, broken leg, but it's, looks, but it's actually a broken heart or a broken spirit. And they avoid the healing or they avoid receiving what heaven wants to bring to bring healing because it's not what we expected or we're too bitter yet to receive it. And so I hope this is blowing your mind, you guys. But the Lord said, we have to let heaven come. He said, nobody gets in a car accident and doesn't do everything they have to do to get better. So basically he said, when we have a broken heart or we have whatever stuff that has happened to us that we didn't expect, and man, it almost tried to destroy us. It tried to steal our fire. It tried to steal our everything. It tried to break us. We have to let him heal that. And sometimes he'll bring things from heaven, that's his plan that is not what we expected. And then sometimes we'll resist it because we're still holding on to those old things. Or not that we want the old things, but we're just still bitter or we're a turkey butt or we become hard. Or we're a sponge and we've let everything in and now there's no room for God. 
because we're letting everything weigh us down. And God's like, man, I got to ring you out. We got to get this stuff off you. You need to be able to let heaven come and you need to receive it. L-E-T, guys, let heaven come. And so the Lord needs you to let heaven come. He doesn't want you to get your leg healed and your arm healed and go around with a crutch. Still using a crutch when God's already healed you. And when God says, okay, son or daughter, give me the crutch, you're like, oh no, I can't. I got, you know, I still need that. But heaven has come. Heaven has healed you. Heaven wants to heal you or it's on its way to heal you. You have to let it come. Yes, I know this is a longer, it's turning into a longer word, you guys, but it's too much good stuff. Let heaven come. So back to what I was saying, he shows me stuff. I can see it and <clears throat> he'll show me things and I see it coming. And I'm like, I'm guilty of being like sassy, like never disobedient. You guys like God already knows how I, we have this thing. Okay. I'm like, Jesus, I see what you're doing. Nope. I'm not going there. That can't be a thing. Like I see that. I see what you're up to and I love you because you like to show me things and get me ready, but no. So here's the thing. We can't be like that. We can be honest with God and say, oh, I mean, I don't know if I'm ready for that. I don't think I can do that. What is that? And you can be like, oh, Jesus, what is that? Lord, help me. Ah, what is that? But the thing is, we can't reject heaven. We have to be willing. You guys, you have a future and hope. Who knows what the heck beautiful thing next is for you. But you will never find out if you don't let him give it to you. If you don't let him pour it out on you. Because you're bitter from some other hurt relationship or <clears throat> some other church that hurt you or some other job that fired you. Or some other ministry that didn't do things as perfectly as you wanted them to. And so here's the thing. You have to let heaven come. Let him be the boss of your life. Let him be in charge of you. Yes, I'm over 30 minutes and I don't even care. Let heaven come. Let him make the choice for you. He knows your heart. He knows what's best for you. He knows what you really need. And he knows how to really heal you. But we have to let heaven come. Amen. And I'm guilty of needing the message the same as everybody. We have to let heaven come. Amen. So let's pray right now. Amen. We're going we're gonna to tell God we're going to let heaven come. We're, we're going to be willing. Lift your hands if you can to receive right now. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, woo, we declare we will let heaven come. We declare we will let all that you have for us be poured out on our life. We will not restrain you. We will not hold you back with our fears, Lord. We will not hold you back with our old hurts. We will trust you with our heart. We will trust you with our future. We will trust you. And Lord, we say, heaven come, heaven come, come heaven, have your way. It's all you. It's all for you, Jesus. It's all for you, Holy Spirit. Let it come. We say, let it come, Lord. Let heaven come. Even if we don't always understand how you're working and, and, and why you're doing certain things. We say, let heaven come. We decide to come into agreement with heaven and break the agreements from the past with demonic agreements. And we say, we agree with heaven. Whatever heaven has for my life, that's what I agree with. And Lord, we say, and we declare, we will let heaven come. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys. I will not apologize for the length of the video. You can skip the announcements. Please don't if you haven't already. If you're at the end of the video, you might have already done that. You're going to know what's going on if you watch the announcements. Don't be annoyed by them. I love you guys. You'll probably see me again before Thanksgiving. Most likely have an amazing Thanksgiving. Think about all the things God's done, you guys. He's an amazing God. And remember this. Bad things are not always bad.
Losses are not always losses. He will allow things for a reason because he knows the truth. The truth can hurt, but it sets you free. Nobody wants to live deceived and blind, you guys. God doesn't want us wasting our time for years at a job, at a church, at a ministry, or in a relationship that is not true and pure and right. He, it's hard and it's hard to fathom, but he has to move us out of that to make room for what is really of him, what's going to be pure and right, what's going to be beautiful and lovely, and is what is going to be just right for you. But he might have to remove some people, remove some jobs, remove some, remove, remove, remove. And that's not always easy. Thank him anyway. Praise him anyway. Amen. Love you guys. And I will talk to you later.